On a chilly November evening back in 2019, officers from Dublin's Garda National Drugs and Organized Crime Bureau set out on a mission that would reshape the city's criminal landscape. Acting on valuable intelligence, they conducted a raid on a residence located in Woodford Grove, Clondalkin. Unbeknownst to them, this operation would become a pivotal moment in the ongoing battle against organized crime. Upon thoroughly searching the main house, the officers stumbled upon a small shed tucked away in the rear of the garden. With tension high and weapons at the ready, they noticed movement from within. Breaking the silence of the night, the command to stand down was given as the officers stormed into the shed. Inside, they encountered two individuals seated on a dilapidated couch. Among them was Trevor Byrne, a notorious figure infamous for his involvement in criminal activities, sending a shiver down the spine of law enforcement. Let's delve into it. With their firearms trained on the individuals, the officers demanded their surrender, yet Berner remained unmoving, his gaze fixed upon them. Despite two additional warnings issued without response, the officers eventually holstered their weapons and forcibly removed the men from the couch, bringing them to the ground. This marked a significant triumph in Dublin's battle against organized crime, as they successfully apprehended one of the most dreaded gunmen associated with the Kinahan cartel. Shortly before Christmas in 2020, Byrne received a nine-year sentence for firearm-related offenses. During the search of the shed, beneath the very couch where Byrne had been seated, officers uncovered a loaded 9mm pistol. A DNA analysis linked the firearm to Byrne, who later confessed before the special criminal court. He claimed to have possessed the weapon for self-defense, citing a threat to his life that had compelled him to flee the country back in 2016. Just months following his nine-year conviction, Trevor Byrne, a man with a rap sheet boasting over 40 criminal convictions, once again found himself in the legal spotlight. This time, he stood trial for his involvement in a bungled armed robbery at Boyle's Sports, a local bookmaker situated in the heart of Applewood Village, Swords County, Dublin. Following the 2010 heist, Byrne proceeded to carjack a woman at gunpoint, issuing threats of violence. Convicted by a non-jury court, Byrne's guilt was established through the identification of a mobile phone left at the crime scene, along with recognition from CCTV footage. Consequently, he was handed a hefty sentence of 17.5 years, encompassing both firearm offenses and the armed robbery. However, this wasn't Byrne's inaugural encounter with the lengthy arm of the law. In 2005, another chapter of his criminal saga unfolded as he received an eight-year sentence for orchestrating a brazen robbery at an off-license establishment. During the heist, Byrne held 10 security guards at gunpoint before making a daring escape in a patrol car, subsequently absconding in a taxi after menacing the driver at gunpoint, all while being pursued by law enforcement. Astonishingly, a mere four months following his November 2009 release from prison, Byrne perpetrated the robbery in swords. Trevor Byrne's tale is one woven with threads of violence, betrayal, and brazen criminal exploits, leaving an indelible imprint upon the city's landscape. Yet, his notoriety transcends mere trigger pulling. He was the orchestrator of the thriving drug trade in Finglas on behalf of the Kinahan Cartel, a position that commanded both reverence and dread. His ascent was facilitated under the mentorship of Glenn David Ward, alias Mr. Flashy, who later assumed control over Finglas in 2017, thereby cementing Byrne's association with the notorious Gucci gang, which wreaked havoc in the locality for years. Byrne's name became synonymous with controversy, particularly as a prime suspect in the 2014 shooting of John Gilligan, a prominent figure in the criminal underworld. Gilligan had accused Byrne of masterminding assassination attempts against him in both 2013 and 2014, stemming from a long-standing feud rooted in their shared time at Port Leash Prison. It's been rumored that Byrne's assault on Gilligan during their incarceration was instigated by Brian the Tosser Meehan, irate over a media interview given by Gilligan. Despite Gilligan's steadfast conviction of Byrne's involvement in the attacks, no charges were laid against Byrne in connection with these incidents. Authorities strongly suspect Trevor Byrne's deep entanglement in the violent Kinahan Hutch feud, a harrowing saga that sent shockwaves through the city's foundation. His name emerged in connection with chilling episodes of gangland violence, notably the brutal slaying of Eddie Nettie Hutch, a brother of Jerry the Monk Hutch, 
mere days following the notorious Regency Hotel shooting in 2016. Nettie, returning home from his taxi driving duties around 7.45 p.m., fell victim to a ruthless ambush. As he exited his taxi, a group of four assailants emerged from a BMW, swiftly advancing towards him. In a hail of gunfire, Nettie was mercilessly gunned down, sustaining up to nine fatal wounds before collapsing in the hallway of his own residence. Tragically, his wife, unsuspecting and present at the time, witnessed the horrifying ordeal unfold. Byrne found himself thrust into the spotlight following his arrest in May 2016, subjected to rigorous interrogation at Mountjoy Garda Station. He was among the initial nine individuals apprehended in connection with the murder investigation. However, despite intense scrutiny, Byrne emerged from the ordeal unscathed, with no charges hanging over his head. Nevertheless, the whispers persisted, with rumors of his complicity reverberating throughout Dublin's labyrinthine alleys. Following his release, Byrne vanished from the country, purportedly seeking refuge in the UK. Yet just when Dublin believed him to be a distant memory, Byrne resurfaced on the city streets, making a reappearance shortly before his subsequent arrest in 2019. Years later, in April 2023, while still serving his 17.5-year prison term at Mountjoy Prison, Trevor Byrne faced a second arrest in connection with the murder of Nettie Hutch, reigniting suspicions of his involvement as one of the gunmen. As the legal proceedings unfold, the case remains ongoing, casting a shadow over Byrne's fate. Yet, even behind bars, Byrne's influence seemed uncontainable. Within the confines of Mountjoy, he embraced his notorious persona, forging alliances with fellow inmates affiliated with the Kinahan cartel. A series of photographs captured within the prison's high security walls provide a glimpse into Byrne's life, seemingly untouched by incarceration. These images depict him celebrating his 40th birthday surrounded by fellow inmates, including Kevin Gibson, Graham Gardner, Glenn Thompson, and Robert Brown. Gibson, a close associate of senior cartel member Liam Byrne, found himself incarcerated for orchestrating a $280,000 cocaine smuggling operation, serving a seven-year sentence. Gardner, identified as the Kinahan Quartermaster, received a nine-year sentence for his involvement in the possession of a significant cache of firearms. These weapons were believed to be earmarked for use in targeting a close associate of Jerry the Monk, Hutch, during a Garda operation targeting the Kinahan gang in 2016. Thompson and Brown, a former British Army soldier, received sentences of 17 and a half years and 11 and a half years respectively for their involvement in possessing firearms. Alongside Thompson's brother, Gary, they were apprehended in a van located in an underground car park merely 250 meters from the residence of their intended target, Patrick Patsy Hutch, another brother of Jerry the Monk Hutch. Garda Intelligence has long linked Trevor Byrne to associates of the Kinahan cartel operating within Dublin. In years past, the seasoned criminal found himself compelled to seek protection from his cartel affiliates amidst threats from notorious crime boss Eamon the Don Dunn. Byrne maintained a close association with the late John Daly, a notorious figure from Finglas known for his outspoken demeanor and volatile temper. Daly met his demise in 2007, allegedly due to concerns that he was encroaching on the territory of Eamon the Don Dunn in North Dublin. It's rumored that Dunn, along with hired hitman Patty Doyle and incarcerated Fat Freddy Thompson, paid $10,000 to orchestrate Daly's assassination. Following Daly's murder, Dunn harbored apprehensions regarding potential reprisals upon Byrne's release from prison in December 2009. In an attempt to prove his allegiance to Dunn, Byrne was reportedly coerced into setting up another criminal figure, John Paul Joyce. However, Byrne balked at the directive and instead sought refuge with the Kinahan cartel. With the assistance of his ally Gary Hutch, Byrne reached out to Daniel Kinahan, securing permission to relocate to the Costa del Sol for safety. Despite Byrne's refusal to comply with Dunn's demands, the crime boss proceeded to eliminate John Paul Joyce before meeting his own demise the following April. And that concludes today's presentation. What are your reflections on the subject at hand? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section and remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content in the future.